What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. I'm Charlie and today I'm going to be showing off all the upgrades that I made to my Anycubic i3 Mega. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. As you may already know, I recently got an Anycubic i3 Mega 3D printer. Overall, this is an incredible 3D printer, especially considering the price, but it can get a little bit noisy when it's printing. Now my apartment is sort of strange in the fact that I have 16 foot ceilings and only 9 foot walls, so that lets every single noise bounce throughout the apartment. If something loud is happening in one room, you can hear it in every other room of the apartment. And so you can imagine if I have a loud 3D printer, it can get pretty annoying from the other rooms. Now the first step that many 3D printer owners take is by placing their 3D printer inside an enclosure. It's a pretty hands-off method and it works pretty well, so if you're interested in doing that, be sure to check out my previous videos on that topic. So with my 3D printer inside an enclosure, it's already a lot quieter, but I didn't want to stop there. There's several upgrades that I wanted to do to it that would make it not only quieter, but safer and more precise. Before I get started disassembling my printer, there are several things that I'm going to need to print out that I'll use later on. Check the links in the description for all the parts you should print before your printer is disassembled. With all of those things printed, we can get started tearing apart the printer. First on my list of printer upgrades is to replace the stepper motor drivers. The i3 Mega comes with A4988 stepper motor drivers, which have a micro step resolution of 1 over 16. They definitely get the job done, but they cause the stepper motor drivers to emit this horrible high pitched noise. And with a micro step resolution of 1 over 16, you'll never get the best precision out of your prints. The best alternative for the A4988 motor drivers is the TMC 2209s. The TMC 2209s come with a micro step resolution of 1 over 256, and they're incredibly quiet and precise. So not only does it make your stepper motors a lot quieter when they're operating, it also increases your precision by a factor of 16. You see, most stepper motor drivers allow you to do what's called micro-stepping. Stepper motors already move in small increments, say about 200 steps per revolution, but micro-stepping divides those steps into even smaller steps to allow for smoother operation. The A4988 with a resolution of 1 over 16 can provide at most 3200 microsteps per revolution in this example, while the TMC2209 is capable of 51,200 microsteps per revolution. With a resolution that precise, it allows for a lot quieter and smoother operation of the stepper motors, which goes a long way in silencing the 3D printer. To replace the stock stepper motor drivers, go ahead and remove the bottom plate on the printer with an M3 hex key. Next, you're going to want to remove the two screws that are holding the cooling fan mounting bracket in place. With that out of the way, you can go ahead and start removing the existing stepper motor drivers. They might have a little bit of hot glue holding them in place, but you should be able to scrape that away without a problem. Now you should be able to start installing the new drivers, which for me was by having the blue pins at the top. The TMC2209 has a little bit different pinout from the stock stepper motor drivers, so you're going to have to flip the stepper motor connectors at the bottom of the motherboard. It's a good idea to do this one at a time so that none of the motors get switched in the process. Now to flip these connectors, you can just take a pair of needle nose pliers and pull the connector out, flip it around and stick it back in. The next step is to calibrate the reference voltage for the new drivers. To do this, power up the printer and measure the voltage difference between ground and VREF with a multimeter. All the sources that I found online claimed that 0.85 was the most accurate voltage reference, so that's what I went with. To adjust the reference voltage, use the plastic screwdriver that came with the drivers and spin the onboard potentiometer left to lower the voltage and right to raise it. Once you have all the drivers calibrated, go ahead and flip your printer over to make sure that everything's working as expected. You should notice that your printer's already way quieter. Next on my list of upgrades is to add a MOSFET to power the hotbed and the hot end. Out of the box, the i3 Mega powers the hotbed and the hot end from the motherboard, which is never good because it can cause the motherboard to overheat. Plus, the terminals that are used are not rated for the amount of current flowing through them. A MOSFET basically stands in between the motherboard and the hotbed or the hot end. 
It takes its power directly from the power supply and the motherboard tells it what voltage to output to the hotbed or the hot end. Now I mounted the MOSFETs on a special holder that I found on Thingiverse which I'll have linked in the description. After mounting the MOSFETs, I disconnected the hotbed and the hot end from the motherboard and shortened the cables. I used the spare bit of wire to connect the power supply to the input port on the MOSFETs and then connected the output port on the MOSFETs to the hotbed and the hot end respectively. The last thing we have to do to set up these MOSFETs is to connect the input data port on each MOSFET to the motherboard output ports. Before we move on, make sure that each component heats up the way that it's supposed to, and if everything looks good, let's get started on the next upgrade. Since I've got my printer inside an enclosure now, it's incredibly important to try to protect the power supply. Power supplies are extremely vulnerable to heat, and if you leave it in there, it will damage it and extremely shorten the lifespan of your power supply. Now, even though I have an exhaust fan pulling some of the heat out of the power supply, if I wanted to print with ABS, I'd switch that fan off, and then I would have a heated enclosure, which is bad for the power supply. To do this, I unscrewed the four bolts on top of the printer body that are holding the power supply in place, as well as the two screws that are holding the power input port in place. Once I had the power supply out of the enclosure, I added some female Tamiya plugs to the power cables going to the MOSFETs as well as the motherboard. With that done, I went ahead and started working on the power supply itself. Now the power supply has one of the loudest fans on this printer, so replacing it will cut down on the noise drastically. So the first step is to remove the cover on the power supply and cut the cables to the fan. I replaced the fan with a 60 by 25 millimeter Noctua Premium Silent Fan, which is a little bit thicker than the fan that comes with the power supply. Since the new fan is a little bit thicker than the previous fan, I had to print out a cover to mount the new fan to. The replacement fan comes with three pins instead of two, which isn't a problem because we're just gonna run the new fan at full speed anyways. So just wire the power and the ground pins on the fan to the existing cables from the power supply. Now we can go ahead and mount the fan on the new cover and mount the cover back into place on the power supply. Next I created four short extension cables ending in female Tamiya plugs. These cables inserted into the power supply cap that I printed earlier and screw into the terminals on the power supply. With all the cables connected to the correct terminals on the power supply, all that's left is to install the power inlet port on the cap and the cap onto the power supply. The last thing to do for the power supply is to create four longer extension cables with male Tamiya plugs on each end. This way we can connect the power supply that's outside of the enclosure to the printer cables that are inside the enclosure. Now I have four output ports coming from the power supply and I have five things that need power because I'm powering the 12 volt exhaust fan directly from the power supply as well. To solve this problem, I connected the two MOSFETs together on the same extension cord. That way I only need four output ports from the power supply. With all of those upgrades complete, you should now have a much safer and quieter 3D printer. To recap, I replaced the stepper motor drivers with TMC 2209s, which not only made the printer a lot quieter, but they also increased the micro step resolution by a factor of 16. I installed MOSFETs to power the hotbed and the hot end to reduce the amount of current flowing through the motherboard, which will prevent it from overheating. And I pulled the power supply out of the 3D printer and replaced the cooling fan, effectively extending the life of the power supply and making it a lot quieter at the same time. All of these upgrades were definitely not for the faint of heart, but in the end I have a much safer and quieter 3D printer that I think was well worth the effort. And there you have it, that is all of the upgrades that I made to my 3D printer. If you're interested in copying my upgrades, then check out the links in the description for all the products that I used. Let me know in the comments what you've thought of this video or if you have any suggestions for me to implement. Also be sure to smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Otherwise that's all for now, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.